Okay, so that's the set of topics, and we're going to start with this idea of misconceptions. But I thought, since this is the first of these lectures, it might be useful to kind of give an introduction of why I wanted to do this class, because I think that sort of shows off the point of why I think this is so important. Like, why teach this class now? Um, some of you know I teach a class here on campus that's a class on evolutionary psychology. I think some of you <coughs> even took that class. Um, and I didn't need to start teaching a new psychology class. In fact, it's a lot of work to come up with this stuff. I'm still working on the lectures. It takes a lot of time. Um, but I decided to do this for a couple reasons, and I decided to do it now for a couple reasons. Um, the first, and there's going to be three reasons why I decided to do this. Um, the first of those three reasons is that this is the time that is ripe for thinking about applying the science of psychology, in part because we are learning a ton about how to apply like these kind of concepts about how we can make ourselves happier. We actually have lots of insights into the kinds of things that make us happier, that make us laugh, that make our lives more fulfilling. And we know this in part because not only are scientists coming up with good ways to study this stuff, good ways to measure this stuff, but folks that really think about applying science to public policy, to practice, are using this stuff a ton. So these are a couple of different articles about different programs in government, both in the UK and here in the States, to apply the science of psychology to kind of nudge people's behavior in the right directions, nudge people to save more, nudge people to eat healthier, and so on. And the amazing thing is that these programs, even when they're implemented in large government scales, actually seem to work amazingly well. There's tons of successes of applying this stuff to changing people's behavior in real time. So never before have we really had so many insights that I could actually teach you about. The kind of time is ripe to start applying this stuff in our own lives. So that's kind of reason number one. Lots of insights there to teach you guys about. Second reason, though, is that we kind of really need these insights pretty badly because the fact is that we're not like as happy or as kind of increased in our well-being as we sort of need to be. I'll give you an article. This is from 2013 um, on ABC News. Americans, most unhappy people in the world, right? And this is 2013. This is before our divisive election. This is a little bit before the kind of, you know, the kind of recession. Like, we're just kind of unhappy. A um, couple of quick statistics. Um, we prescribe antidepressants at 400 times the rate that we did 20 years ago, 400 times the rate of 20 years ago. Most surveys show that Americans and a lot of people in general are not getting happier. And if you look at some subsets of the population, surveys like the Harris survey and so on have shown that certain groups are actually getting more unhappy. And one of those groups is recent graduates, like a lot of you guys are about to be soon, like getting more unhappy than they've ever been and more unhappy than they were before. So this is like not cool. Like people kind of need this stuff. The upshot is like we're just a society of like kind of walking around, like not being as happy as we could be, so we kind of need this. Um, but I think one of the reasons I chose to teach this here, and then I'm talking to you guys and not only doing an online course, is the we is a kind of broad we, it's like society at large, but I think the we here on campus is like even more needy, that like you Yale students need this stuff. And so that was reason number two I decided to teach this course now, is that you guys, you guys broadly as a society and you guys as Yale students really need this stuff. Um, but the third reason is actually the most personal one of why I wanted to teach this, which is that it's not just Yale students that need these insights. I actually need these insights, too. You guys already saw my authentic happiness survey. I didn't realize when I put that screenshot up that it had my score, but it did. Like I'm only like halfway, and I'm, in fact, only about 40% up above people my age in the population. So I'm kind of like below average on my own happiness. So you might have the thought that like the professor teaching this course is like this like you know smiley happy and I go through life you know and around all these Yale students who are sad I'm like I'm gonna make you guys as happy as I am, but in fact that is not true. If anything, it's like you know I'm sad too, but you know, sometimes like 